Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's our next video for our channel. And today we're gonna talk about hybrid and electric vehicles, but in this case, not for the automotive technicians, but for our friends from the first responders. So today, this video is a shout out to all the firefighters, police officers, what else? Tow truck operators. Tow truck operators. Crash repair. Crash repair. So you see even the man behind the camera is a very smart one. It's of course, Daniel. Today, we're going to show you the brand new car train and it's the world's first and only training system for high voltage vehicles for first responders. And here we go. So what you see here, you directly can recognize it. It has the shape of the rescue card, which is the most important component or document for the first responders. So before they get in touch with the vehicle or any certain kind of car, they have first to look for the rescue card and see what is special about the car. Okay, what we can absolutely identify here is that we are talking about an electric vehicle. We see it here, of course, all the orange colors over there and down the road here with the legend, which is showing us where the high voltage components are, like in a real vehicle. And of course, we have everywhere batches, which are showing it is a hybrid drive or a pure electric vehicle, for example. Do they things have to be there? Well, of course not. When the, car, well, when the car gets in the hands of a private person, this person can remove these badges or even not. So they doesn't have to be there, but as soon as you read something like hybrid drive or hybrid synergy drive from Toyota, for example, you directly know this will be a hybrid or electric vehicle. In any way, a high voltage car. So let's have a look. What is the first important component which we need to interact with when we are taking care of such a vehicle? This is the smart key. Where do we find the smart key in that case? Down here. When Daniel do a focus on that, that means we have here a real smart key at the system. And furthermore, because this is all about understanding and for a deeper knowledge, we have even a LED here which shows us if the key is in range or not in range. So that means when it's green, it is in range. When it's red, it's not in range. So what are we gonna do now? So we're coming to the car and first we make sure that the car is really shut down or the high voltage system is really shut down. So we have to take or make sure that of course the ready mode is not activated. That's the case right now. So there's no ready mode. When I would go now to the brake and to engine start, you would see the high voltage is powering up and we are in ready mode. So first of all, what we make sure now, we turn off or shut down the ready mode. But then we have also to make sure to get rid of the smart key. So how are we gonna do that? Of course I can throw it and give it to Daniel and he will run away now with the key. So that means in particular, you have to bring the key in a certain distance from the car that you make sure that it's not, or that, you, that the car is not able anymore to recognize the key so that someone can activate the ready mode again. But is that now really sure? So we have just thrown away the key. So are we really safe now that, there, that it's not possible to get the car in ready mode anymore? Let's check. Oops, it's still possible. As we see now, ready mode is on again and the smart key is in range. Isn't that weird? I mean, the key is now far away from the car, but we have still are able to operate the vehicle or the high voltage system. Here comes the trick. What is very, or maybe not happens always, but you has always to make sure that you really try and test if you can activate a voltage system. Because there are some car owners who have even the spare key inside the glove box, for example, or somewhere around the car, or basically inside the car. That means you can still activate the high voltage system. So what we do here, we have to check the car now where a spare key is and Oh my gosh, there it is. So this key now we won't put away from the car, but we're taking now the safety box. This is a lockout box, which you're also using inside the workshop. And when we now put the key in here, it's now a metal housing, and we just have to wait for a few seconds. And there you see already, there is no smart key in range anymore. And that means when we now shut down the car, we can't 
activated anymore. And we are safe that no one else can put the car back into operation. Okay, the next step. What is also pretty important is that we know as a firefighter where in the car do we find high voltage, especially when the ready mode is on. So therefore, of course, we get back the key, put it inside the car, and now we start the vehicle. Let's see. So we go to ready mode over here. And now you can see, as Daniel did a perfect zoom, we have now high voltage inside the high voltage battery. But now we have also voltage inside the inverter. Speaking of 300 volts. So the voltage of the battery is basically forwarded to all the other electric components inside the high voltage system. For example, to the inverter. And now what we have to make sure is to shut down the high voltage system. So one step would be, of course, to shut down the um, ready mode or the car just by pushing the engine key. We can do that. Okay, it's telling us now that the voltage goes down, but now we have even some further meth methods in order to shut down the high voltage system properly. Because inside the real vehicle, of course, we can't see what the actual voltage is. So we just can assume it. And therefore, there are some methods which we gonna can take in order to make sure that the high voltage system is really shut down. And of course, there's no standard between the different cars. There are some, yeah, some different methods at this car or that car. What, what we have done here, we have integrated any method into one training system. So let's have a look. How can we shut down the high voltage system? Daniel is doing a zoom on the cutting loop, for example. So right here, we have a so-called cutting loop and you do exactly what the name is. You have to cut it on two separated points in order to interrupt the connection and be aware of this cable is red, not orange. So it has nothing to do with the high voltage system. It's mainly a part of the battery management system or of the interlock. And if you interrupt this signal here by cutting it, then you can make sure that the battery management system will shut down and open the smart relays of the high voltage battery. What else do we have here? So this is typically used at Tesla or even at Mercedes-Benz, for example. Let's jump over here. Another yeah, shutdown system for the low voltage side of the vehicle, which is also used by many different car manufacturers. It's BMW, it's Volkswagen, Audi, and as well as Mercedes-Benz too. So this one we have just to pull out. So I won't do it right now, but you just pull it out and then you have to shut down the system. It's the same behavior like if you cut here, same behavior here when you pull out the trigger. What else do we have? So that's a very easy one. This particular not a special shutdown component, but this is the 12 volt battery. And of course the whole operational system for the high voltage system is based on the 12 volt battery. That means when you interrupt the minus pole of the battery, then the whole system is shut down and you're gone. So that means then you can also be pretty sure that the high voltage system is shut down. And the last piece over here, also very easy to operate with. You can just pull it out. That's the so-called high voltage fuse. Again, this fuse has nothing to do with high voltage. It is just operating in the 12 volt system and yeah, triggers the battery management system to shut down the high voltage system. Now we have talked about all the systems or shutting down methods which are part of the 12 volt system. But again, there's another switch or another method which is actually part of the high voltage system. And here we're gonna talk about the high voltage service plug. This thing you found, this guy you find on the very first cars, like on the Toyota Prius, for example, there you have exactly this plug which is directly connected to the high voltage battery. And yes, it is orange. So very interesting to see now, especially when we start the system again. Okay, when we now shut down the system by using that switch, we have like a two-way switch. So in the first, the first level is that we open it here and that we interrupt the interlock. That's the same connection like over here for the 12 volt system or five volt system basically. What you see now, the ready mode is just out 
we get a high voltage fault and in the next step now we have to release it. Here we go. And now you see I have the switch and what happens now? Now this is the only method in order to get zero volts at the output of the high voltage battery. But beware, of course the electrical energy is still inside the high voltage battery. So you can't disconnect the high voltage battery, you just can disconnect the high voltage system from the high voltage battery, but the high voltage battery will always contain electrical energy and will be a danger. Speaking about the high voltage battery, as we have now identified that this battery is the most dangerous part of the high voltage system because all the other things we can basically shut down just by using one of these methods, there is a certain yeah, higher danger to the high voltage batteries, especially when a car is involved in an accident. What the firefighters have to do here, or even all the other guys which are following the firefighters and who have, who have to deal with the, um, with the damaged car, they need to make sure that there is no danger from the high voltage battery. Speaking of a thermal runaway. So what does it mean? Let's have a check. We just go back with the system. By the way, of course, normally you touch these systems with the, uh, with the gloves, with electric gloves, like this one here. But this is just a rule for automotive technicians. On the side of the firefighter, you have to decide for, in your own fire, firefighter brigade how you want to act here. If you have these kind of gloves or even such a lockout box inside your car, if you want to use it, if this should be part of your strategy, this is completely up to yours. We are delivering everything with the system so that you can train to the highest safety standards. But if you say, okay, you don't want to use that for your training, that's absolutely okay. So let's have a check now uh, through the high voltage battery and we have talked about the thermal runaway. So what I've done here, we have here five different accident scenarios where we just talk to different firefighters and just to get an idea of what typical accidents and incidents can happen with hybrid electric vehicles on the road. And we just want to have a look at the second one over here, which is really, really interesting. So we're talking here about heavy damage at the rear of the car. And yeah, maybe the high voltage battery is damaged or not. You really cannot see it that good. And even when you don't see any damage from the outside, it can happen that there is a damage in the inside of the battery. That for example, just one cell got a short circuit or whatever, and it will cause a problem. But how can we see that? Of course, we don't have the time and the equipment to measure the high voltage battery from a voltage side or from an electrical side. So what we're going to do here, we need a quick and efficient method. And that's why we're using the thermal camera here. So what you're doing here now, I tried to get it together with Daniel. We're scanning now the battery basically. So let's check the temperature. And oh dear, there you see we have a serious problem here. Yeah, it's, you see it perfect in the camera. There, there is a thermal runaway, there is the hot spot. And this is a clear incidents here that something goes wrong with a cell inside the high voltage battery. So this cell heats up and when you won't do anything against it then the whole high voltage battery will catch fire and that's the complete nightmare. If you want to erase a fire on, high, on a high voltage battery that is like it needs unlimited amounts of water and it's a really really critical thing because even if you have erased the fire the fire could come back again. So therefore, make sure that you understand the danger of the high voltage battery, that you have a look at it first and see if there's any case of rising temperature. And when this happens, then you have to directly cool down the high voltage battery that it cannot catch fire. Alrighty, so now we just have a quick uh, look up at our new trainer. I hope you enjoy that. There's even of course an e-learning course for it which depends on the country where you are. So we have different e-learning courses for the different countries. Well we're gonna have a look now. <laughs> 
Welcome back now to our e-learning course for First Responder card. And as you see here with all the sound and uh, um, big alarm, so this course is especially designed for the USA and for the US market. And as you see here with the objectives, you see all the learning outcomes which we are focusing on and these are especially designed for our first responders and all the other jobs professions around. So let's have a closer look what the content of the course is. So here you see all or you get all the necessary information which you need to in order to get the car train ready and how to use it. So it's describing the simulation of the high voltage, the high voltage fault indicator as well as the accident scenarios. Next, overall here you get an overview about the different practical exercises. So that, that means that you here see all the different experiments or practical tasks which you can do and which you can directly perform like hands-on training on the car train. And there are even some practical exercises which you can print out. Okay, furthermore, let's jump into the single topics that you just get, get a quick overview about everything. So we start with examples of hybrid and electric vehicles, the identification, so basically how you can identify a hybrid or an electric vehicle directly followed by an exercise or practical task. And there you see all the, f um, all the experiments as well as the knowledge tests are coming with multiple choice or single choice questions where you directly get the feedback about your knowledge and if you have understood it correctly or not. If you go further in that range then you get more and more into the different topics. So we have here like we've seen in the video before the um, ready mode and also everything about the ignition key. We have special things like retractable door handles so this is like an emergency unlocking function, especially when you have electrical door handle which are not mechanical and in a case of an accident when the electrical system fails that you still have a possibility to open the door for example. Then we go further, first aid, we have general plan of attack when you go in such systems or when you have such incidents with high voltage vehicles so what you should do so basically here it describes you in a very nice way what you have to do and what you have to take care of and especially the blue stuff or the blue points are the things which you have to take care of when there is an hybrid or an electric vehicle involved Let's go further through the course. So we have the operational stand standards, the th thermography of the high voltage battery, and as you see, everything is guided and shown by animations. So we try to reduce the text and are using a lot of videos, animations, and pictures here, of course. We have submerged vehicles inside the course as well as vehicles with fuel cell. So that's all this described inside the course. Safe transport high voltage electric vehicle jump starting, much more hazards associated with the transportation of electric and hybrid vehicles. So this is really important for the tow truck drivers. How do you have to transport a hybrid or an electric vehicle? And as you see, there are more and more informations inside the course which showing you how to deal with hybrid and electric vehicles as a first responder or a similar job profession.